All right, Frida, I think we're ready. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Frida. My colleagues Eileen, Michelle, and myself will be your interpreters this morning. Buenos días a todos. Mi nombre es Frida. Mis colegas Michelle, Eileen, y yo seremos sus intérpretes esta noche. I'll give this message both in English and in Spanish. That is the mensaje tanto en inglés como en español. In order to provide language access, this meeting will have simultaneous bidirectional interpretation into English, Spanish, American Sign Language, and will also have closed captioning. If you're bilingual into English and Spanish, you don't have to do anything. However, if you're not bilingual into English and Spanish and you're in your laptop, please locate the icon shaped like a globe at the bottom of your screen, click on language interpretation, and then select English. If, if you're in your phone or an iPad or a similar device, then locate the three dot menu in the upper right corner of your screen, click on language interpretation, and then select English. When you speak, do so at a moderate pace because the interpreter is going to be simultaneously interpreting everything you say. Also, as a reminder, in order to highlight uh, our ASL interpreters, keep your camera off unless you're actively speaking. A efecto de proporcionar acceso lingüístico, esta reunión contará con interpretación al inglés, al español y al lenguaje de señas americano y contará con subtítulos. Si usted es bilingüe en inglés y en español, no tiene que presionar nada. Pero si usted no es bilingüe en inglés y en español este, y está en su computadora, por favor localice el icono en forma de globo que está en la parte inferior de su pantalla, haga clic en interpretación y después seleccione español o Spanish. Si usted está en su teléfono o un iPad o un dispositivo similar, entonces localice el menú de tres puntos que está en la parte superior derecha de su pantalla, haga clic en interpretación de idiomas y después seleccione español o Spanish. Cuando hable, hágalo en español, el intérprete estará interpretando simultáneamente todo lo que usted diga. Y también un recordatorio para eh, tener disponible el video de las intérpretes de lenguaje de señas americano, por favor mantenga su video apagado eh, en caso de que no esté hablando activamente. Antes de que me vaya, ¿alguien tiene alguna pregunta respecto a la interpretación? Before I go, anyone has a question regarding interpretation? If not, we may begin. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the transition meeting from child care and development programs from the Department of Education to the Department of Social Services. This is our uh, third quarterly stakeholder meeting and we welcome you today and have again the opportunity uh, to both meet some of the new members of our team um, to hear about the progress we've made to date, uh, upcoming activities and opportunities to engage with us, and of course, ask questions and comments that you have. Again, wanna just uh, really appreciate uh, the partnership and the engagement across the state, including uh, the tremendous efforts of the Department of Education who's supporting us and onboarding us uh, to many of the programs that are happening. With that, I will turn it over to Christina. Thank you so much for that welcome, Kim, and uh, good morning to everyone and, and welcome, as Kim mentioned, to our third quarterly uh, stakeholder meeting. Uh, before we dig into a couple of interactive polling questions, just as a reminder, uh, if you are not speaking to, please uh, keep your cameras off. Uh, this will make sure that our ASL interpreters are on screen and so that everyone can uh, access and receive the interpretation services needed to engage in the conversation. Uh, with that, again, my name is Christina Mesa. I'm the branch chief with the CalWORKs and Family Resilience Branch. I've had the honor of participating in many of our listening sessions as uh, your host, and so really excited to participate in this conversation and get us started uh, with a couple of interactive polling questions. Um, with that, I think we can go ahead and start. Our polling questions are going to be a little different than they have been traditionally in our listening sessions. We'll be launching polls directly in the Zoom application. Um, and so, uh, Corey, I'm going to go ahead and ask, oh, I, well, I can launch the polling questions. Thank you, Corey. So I'm going to launch, launch the first question. You should see it in your screen in just a couple of seconds. And the question is, how familiar are you with our child care transition 
quarterly stakeholder update meeting. So as we mentioned, this is our third one. So wanting to get a feel from all of you as to uh, whether you've uh, been to one of our child care transition quarterly stakeholder meetings before, uh, if you've been to all of our child care transition uh, calls before, or if this is your first uh, quarterly transition call um, that you are joining us in. So we'll give folks a few seconds to go ahead and uh, enter in their responses. Okay, looks like we have most responses in. So I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll. So it looks like it's a pretty even split. Uh, quite a few folks on the line have been to all of our stakeholder calls. So really appreciate the engagement. Uh, have quite a few, about uh, one third of us joining for the first time. Uh, so really excited to uh, hopefully continue the partnership, have you continue to engage in these discussions. As we mentioned, these calls in particular happen on a quarterly basis. Uh, and so really excited um, to continue them in this new quarter. Okay. And then we have one more question. Just give me one second to pull it up. So the next question for uh, the second poll that we have for everyone asks what topics related to the child care transition you would like to dis uh, see discussed during these meetings. So we have a couple of topics that uh, have been featured in previous conversations, have been elevated in some of our previous stakeholder engagement process, whether it be through our surveys uh, or through our listening sessions. And so through that, we've filtered some topics. Obviously, if there are other topics you don't see here but would like to be elevated, please enter them in the chat. But the options on the screen are first contracts. The second option is alignment with uh, TK through 12 educational pro uh, programs. The third option is licensing. The fourth option is ways to improve state communication. The fifth option is quality improvement programs. And then the final option is workforce stabilization programs. So again, we'll give folks a few seconds to go ahead and submit their responses. Seeing others elevated in the chat, thank you so much. Parent and community engagement. Okay, it looks like we have most of our responses in, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this poll and let me share results. And while the results are sharing on your screen, I'm seeing others entered and elevated in chat, appreciate that. Seeing family and eligibility of families and fees related to eligibility or uh, enrollment, I see that being elevated in chat. Um, but to share results, so it looks like um, we, we missed one at the beginning, but the most popular response is impact uh, of the transition at the local level. Apologies for not calling that out earlier when we were going through the options, but I see that one is the most popular. So really appreciate that one being elevated uh, in the responses. Also seeing uh, contracts as well as ways to improve state communication. So really appreciate this. Uh, we'll take this back to help inform uh, our future sessions. And want to remind folks that in addition to these polling interactive questions that we raise in our quarterly calls, as well as our listening sessions, uh, we have a few other opportunities for folks to elevate these types of uh, uh, recommendations and feedback. We have our live form that's on our website, and we'll go through in detail what those stakeholder engagement opportunities look like uh, during the presentation. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close results. Perfect, thank you all for participating. And I am going to turn things over to our Chief Deputy, Jennifer Troya. 
Thank you, Christina, and good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jen Troya, and I am a Chief Deputy Director at the Department of Social Services. I want to welcome you again to this quarterly stake stakeholder conversation. Um, y también quiero, um, quiero decir bienvenidos a aquellos de ustedes que, que hablan español, en español. Gracias para estar con nosotros esta día. Um, and then I'll continue in English. Sorry, Frida, for that quick, <laughs> quick bit in Spanish. So um, again, just want to cover our agenda for the day um, and indicate that we're going to just do a quick overview of the transition, share with you a couple of announcements and updates about CDSS leadership, talk about the progress we've made in this um, second quarter of this transition year, talk about upcoming activities and ways that we can continue to engage with you and um, invite your participation, and then make sure that we also leave plenty of time for questions and comments from all of you. I think we can go to the next slide. So on the next slide, we have just a little bit of an overview here again, and a reminder of what brings us together today. Last year, the 2020 budget um, in Senate Bill 98, which was a budget trailer bill, um, moved the uh, administration of several child care and development programs from the California Department of Education to the Department of Social Services. And those moves will become, that transfer will become effective July 1, 2021. So what we are in this year is a transition year where CDE and CDSS are working in very close partnership to ensure that there is no disruption to the system and to um, the children and families that we serve, to the um, workforce, and to um, all of us at the state level um, as well. So we are working hard together to ensure that. Um, and this uh, slide includes some of the intent that was described by the legislature and enacted by the governor as what we are looking for in making this transition. So we ultimately want a high quality, affordable early childhood system that's designed to comprehensively and effectively serve children and families. We also want an integrated system that serves the whole child and whole families and recognizes um, everything that it is that they need in order to thrive. So with that, I think we can go ahead and go to the next slide. This is further describing some of those transition objectives. Um, and I want to, um, recognize that many of these are things that the field has been working on for many years and we look forward to continuing to partner with CDE and with all of you as stakeholders to build upon the successes that have come thus far and to um, create even greater success as we move forward. Um, each of these is, um, I will let you read for yourselves, but is, is a critical value and objective that we hold and that we will continue to build on together through the transition and into the future of the programs once they are all under one department. The critical opportunity is that we will now have the child care and development programs, licensing, and many of the state's other safety net programs all within one department. And we believe that there are, are ways that that will lead to tremendous improvements um, in the system and for the people we serve. So with that, I think we'll go to the next slide. Selena Chow is here with us um, this morning. She is our uh, new Chief Operating Officer, and I will um, turn it over to her to let her introduce herself briefly to all of you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Selena Chow. I'm the new Chief Operating Officer at CDSS. This is the role that Pete Trevinka previously had um, uh, and I had just started this role um, as of this month in January. Um, so in my role, I oversee administration, the information systems, research, data automation, uh, the legislation, public affairs, and other enterprise solutions. So, so this is the, the broad scope of all of the operations um, portions and functions of our department. Um, and then I also have about 15 years um, of uh, history here at the Department of Social Services, um, starting with the program um, CalWORKs. So I do have 
familiarity with the child care arena from, from that time in program. And then I transitioned over to the fiscal arena where I've been in the last 10 years, also working very closely on the child care budget um, and in, child, uh, in budget development. I have also been involved in a lot of the department's equity efforts and various workforce initiatives. And I really have a strong uh, interest in creating a positive work environment and continuous learning and um, quality environment for, for those of us at CDSS, as well as those we are welcoming transitioning from CDE. And I'll turn it back to Jen to continue with our agenda. Thank you, Selena. So the next thing I want to do is one more introduction. This is someone who is um, not yet here with us this morning, but will be joining the department um, as of February 16th, and we're very excited to welcome her. This is Lupe Jaime, who will be our new deputy director of the new Child Care and Development Division. The Child Care and Development Division will house many of the programs that are moving over from CDE to CDSS. Uh, many of you know Lupe, who has been a senior director for early childhood education in Fresno County for a number of years um, and has worked closely with many of you in the field for far longer than that. So we are super excited to welcome her. I see lots of congratulations pouring into the chat as well, um, and we share your enthusiasm. So Lupe will be with us again as of February 16th. So with that, I think we wanted to talk a bit about what's been happening in the second quarter of this transition year. And we can go ahead to the next slide. And one further. Thank you. So I know I referenced earlier that there has been an extraordinary amount of collaboration and teamwork between CDE and CDSS. We're super grateful for their partnership and for all that they have been sharing about how, how the details and the nitty gritty of the programs work now to make sure that there will be no disruption um, when we welcome the staff to CDSS and transition the programs over as of July 1. So this slide includes reference to a number of um, areas of our collaboration that we are really getting into a lot of detail with each other about. Um, and we'll continue to work with each other about for the remainder of this transition year. In many instances, we have also had stakeholder engagement related to these topics and will again um, continue that very soon. So with that, I will actually um, flip to the next slide and ask Christina, who's been very involved in um, many of these sessions, to jump back in and go ahead and, and talk a little bit more about the stakeholder engagement that we have had. Thank you so much, Jen. Thank you, Selena, and extension of the congratulations to Lupe. Um, and yes, stakeholder engagement has definitely been active this last quarter. Uh, as many of you know, this is our third, as we mentioned earlier, quarterly stakeholder webinar. Uh, we hosted one in July, uh, right after the transition was first announced. As our second session was in October. Uh, and so both of those sessions, uh, as the live recording as well as the slideshows, are on our transition-focused webpage. We will have a link to that webpage later on in the trans um, in the presentation. But just a reminder is that that is the 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 hub of all things related to the stakeholder engagement process that we've been unfolding throughout the transition. In addition to our quarterly stakeholder calls, we've also been engaged with the Early Childhood Policy Council or ECPC in their work group sessions as well as their meetings. We typically engage in these sessions we um, right after we post our quarterly update reports that are due to the legislature every quarter throughout the transition. Uh, and so we just posted our second uh, quarterly transition update report on our webpage on December 31st. So that again is on our transition focused webpage. And we will be uh, present during the ECPC meeting next week on February 3rd to dive in a little bit further on what's included in that report, as well as some other high level updates around the transition and stakeholder engagement opportunities. Uh, in addition to these sessions, we've also been hosting our topically based listening sessions. We've had the opportunity to hold four this last quarter. We'll be launching a new uh, series this quarter with more information to come soon. Uh, all of this information is 
uh, released again on our transition focus web page, but we also have a list serve uh, with an email address that's tied to it. So we'll share information about how to get signed up for that list serve. So that way you're looped into all of these different opportunities. Uh, last quarter, we had our first listening session in October on contracts. We had our sec second uh, listening session in November on issues in rural areas. Uh, and then we had our, our final two uh, listening sessions in December around equity and then whole child, whole family. All of these listening sessions have been recorded. They are live on our transition focus website as well uh, as the PowerPoint presentations that accompanied them. Uh, it was great to have uh, an interactive session that had live polling as well as quite a, a stakeholder comment period. Uh, and so we were able to get quite a bit of information from these listening sessions to help inform the transition and uh, the transition plan, which we'll share a little bit more uh, in an upcoming slide. And then lastly, we've been able to engage in our tribal partners in these various settings, but in addition to that, have also worked to engage parents. We're working very closely with our partners, Parent Voices, to launch a series of parent focus groups, but they've also had an opportunity to elevate parent voices in the listening sessions that we were able to host last quarter to make sure we were capturing that feedback during this process as well. With that, Corey, if we could go to the next slide, please. So upcoming activities just wrapped up what we were able to launch this last quarter. A lot of that will look similar in this new quarter uh, with a couple of big additions. So first being the release of the draft of our transition plan. That draft will be posted on our transition focus webpage for stakeholder feedback. We'll have it live open for that stakeholder feedback period for about three weeks. Uh, and really looking forward to getting input um, that we can integrate there into the plan, which the final iteration is due to the legislature on March 31st. We will also be hosting a transition plan walkthrough modeled uh, very much after our listening sessions. Uh, we're hoping to launch the first transition plan walkthrough next week. Uh, and with that, we'll have opportunities from or some live feedback during that session but want to make sure that stakeholders have an opportunity uh, to provide that written feedback on our website as well. In addition to these efforts, we've also launched a couple of new partnerships, uh, one being with our partners, the Child Care Law Center, working very closely with them uh, around uh, key issues, challenges, and recommendations that have been elevated from these stakeholder uh, engagement opportunities also working with Parent Voices to launch those parent focus groups that we mentioned earlier. And we're also working with CLASP to dig into some of those policy recommendations a little further as well. With that, if we can go to the next slide, Corey. Thank you. And then lastly, we uh, have a big project underway with our partners at the California Department of Education. The Child Care and Development Fund Plan or CCDF plan is due right around the corner. Uh, and so uh, alongside CDE, we've been working very closely to co-author the new iteration of the CCDF plan. A draft of the CCDF plan will be released for public comment, much like our transition plan uh, for the time period between February 12th and March 16th. That draft plan will be posted on CDE's website, but we'll have a link to that plan on our transition focus website so that folks who are engaged in this setting can still participate and engage in the CCDF planning setting as well. On March 3rd, CDE will host a public hearing period uh, for the CCDF plan to further engage stakeholders and uh, capture those feedbacks and comments from folks. And then we ask that uh, if you have comments or feedback related to the CCDF plan, to please submit those comments to the email address that's linked here. The email address is statepln at cde.ca.gov. And with that, if we can go to the next slide, Corey, I am going to turn things over to Jen Troya. Thanks, Christina. And I do also want to acknowledge, I noticed it was not on the slide, but of course we, we expect to engage with many of you with respect to the governor's budget and the remainder of the budget process um, for the coming year as well. Um, so the survey that is listed here is uh, for feedback. You can actually use your phone to just scan the QR code if you'd like and go straight to the survey. Uh, is feedback about related to the transition. 
additional things that you would like to see us focus on, uh, resources that you may need, uh, pretty open-ended questions so that we can stay in touch with you and hear from you about what it is that you'd like from us during this transition. We will also have some additional listening sessions beyond the ones that Christina already described. Um, and so stay tuned for those. There's a website that we'll give you before um, this PowerPoint is over and an email address that you can use as well. So if we can go to the next slide with that. This is what um, Christina already mentioned is a save the date here for our transition plan walkthrough. It's a pretty detailed plan and we look forward to engaging with all of you and gathering your feedback with respect to the draft that will be public very soon. And then I think we've got um, one more. There we go. Uh, the slides will be available. I noticed the request for them for the links in the chat. We can put the links in the email in the chat, but we also will share the slides uh, publicly. And so please don't, don't feel that you need to quickly write everything down. You will have access to it. So here again is um, our links to the website and to the um, email box that we regularly monitor and can use for questions and can um, answer those. And if questions are coming up frequently, then we know to plug it into our conversations um, with all of you through these kinds of forums or other written documents as well. So with that, I think we are ready to open up for some questions and answers. I see that some questions have been coming in through the chat feature and we can answer some of those through the chat as well. Um, we can also answer some of those live verbally, and we also will have the opportunity to unmute folks and allow for questions um, for, for you all to ask your questions verbally. So let me start off with just a question or two from the chat that I think I can answer quickly, and then um, we'll identify where to go after that. So um, the first one is I saw a question in the chat about whether or not all CDE staff would be moving over to CDSS. Um, there is currently in the governor's budget, a budget change proposal that identifies um, around 187 staff who will be moving from CDE to CDSS. We are still working in collaboration closely between the two departments um, to identify if there are refinements to that number or additional um, pieces that we need to put forward. But that is that is what's included for now as we continue to work together on refinements. There are um, the preschool programs certainly that are remaining at CDE. And so there may be some staff who you all are used to working with who will be remaining at CDE in order to continue to administer preschool. Um, or work on other projects at CDE, but many of the folks who you are used to working with in the um, early learning and care division and a few other places within CDE will indeed be uh, welcomed to the CDSS team as of July 1, 2021. Um, another question I saw in the chat was what will happen to the family child care networks under general child care and just want to be clear that we are not proposing any changes at this time. So with that, let me um, turn it back over to Christina or um, anyone else who is going to facilitate a little bit about figuring out how to unmute or get some additional questions from the chat. Yes, thank you, Jen. So uh, highly encourage folks to continue to uh, uh, enter questions in chat. Uh, we have some folks on the line who will be monitoring chat. Uh, so that way we can get to some of those questions that are elevated in that space. Uh, if we are unable to get to your question during the call today, we are uh, keeping the chat for our record so that way we can address them in upcoming stakeholder calls. Uh, but for those of you who would like to verbally ask your question, much like our listening sessions, we ask that you uh, utilize the raise hand feature, which should be uh, an option on the bottom right hand of your screen. And if you raise your hand, we'll be able to manually unmute you. Uh, so that way you can ask your question to us as well. So again, that's the raise hand feature. That option should be available for you on the bottom right hand of your screen. So we'll give folks a few seconds to go ahead and continue to submit questions via chat or uh, raise their hands.
And while folks are doing that, Christina, I'll just take one of the questions from the chat box that I see recently. The question was, is CalWORKs childcare anticipated to remain separated in stages or would it be consolidated in some way to something more unified with one set of rules and regulations? And I just want to identify here that we, we do not currently have a policy proposal to make any immediate changes. This is certainly a topic that has come up and um, the master plan does also um, recognize the importance of the conversation. Um, but before any changes would occur, we would, we would be going through the regular public processes of um, making proposals for those changes and engaging with all of you. So um, more to come, but uh, no, no anticipated changes that we can outline in specific right now. Thanks for that, Jen. And we do have one hand raised. So T Foster, apologies, I can't see uh, your first name. I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you if you'd like to ask your question. Yes, good morning. And I would like to ask, uh, the first question I have is the fund transfer. So uh, are we able to do fund transfer still from CSPP to CCTR? Thank you for that. And what was your, uh, oh, just give us one second. I think we have um, Selena on the line who can answer that question for us. Sure. Um, I, I think on the fund transfer question, we are still working out those details with our partners at CDE, as well as with Department of Finance to try to figure out mechanics. So we don't have a specific update on that at this point, but we will sure report back to this group once we have more information. Okay. Thank you. And the other question I have is, um, are we now required to submit two audit reports, one going to CDE and one going to CDSS? Um, those are also details that we're trying to parse through. Uh, we definitely would want to emphasize streamlining so that there's not duplicate work that um, is required. Um, but once we know more, we will definitely share that out as well. Thank you, Selena. And just a reminder, next week we will have the transition plan posted on our website uh, for more information around some of the logistical aspects of the transition and opportunities to provide feedback uh, on that plan as well. Uh, one more raised hand, Melinda Frizzell. Melinda, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you so you can ask your question. Yes, I'm just interested to know how much support um, this transition is going to provide, um, you know, school of choice for these parents to in continue including the private sector, or is the ultimate goal to push TK and pre-K into elementary school? If your question is is mostly focused on the policy with respect to preschool, then we would really need to defer it to CDE. So both preschool and TK are still going to be administered by CDE after this transition. And so we would encourage you to connect with them and we certainly can let them know that these questions are coming up here as well so they can communicate proactively with you all. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you, Jen. And then we have one last uh, raised hand uh, at the moment. So Rick Richardson, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. Okay, Rick, you should be unmuted. Hello, good morning. And uh, we sure appreciate uh, these opportunities to learn about the changes. Um, my question's about uh, CSPP and alternative payment program. Currently uh, CSPP and stage two and three alternative payment um, and, and the uh, California alternative payment program, the non-CalWORKs version, they all have the same application and generally the same eligibility requirements. Uh, this enables a transition um, today as children of working parents age out of CSPP and seek a non-CalWORKs AP voucher 
to continue subsidized childcare to meet the needs of, of, the, of the family. With the move to DSS and CDE, um, splitting CSPP under one department and um, alternative payment under another department, is there going to be a deliberate um, plan to continue to have an alignment between the programs so we don't inadvertently create a gap as part of this new this uh, this new restructuring, a gap that would harm parents that um, that really need the continued subsidized childcare as they age out of CSPP. And specifically, I'm thinking of um, working parents who need full day year round type care where, where transitional kindergarten and kindergarten can't meet all their needs. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Um, we absolutely share your priority um, of making sure that we do not create any unnecessary gaps or disruptions. It's a critical value um, for us and for CDE in this transfer and transition. And so, um, yes, we will be working very closely together to try to ensure that there are no such disruptions that are unnecessary and that we are closely aligned um, in the policies that we can be. And this is Selena. I'd like to jump back in just to provide a little clarification about funding and contracts as I see some of the questions in the chat box. Um, we are working with Department of Finance to try to identify um, language that would allow us authority to transfer funds between departments and make uh, adjustments as needed um, throughout the transfer process. And we are also working with CDE to um, work out the mechanics in terms of um, any contracts or MOUs that need to be done at the state level between the two departments. So that if there are um, programs that are partially funded, then, then we would try to uh, use those vehicles to make sure that funding is in the right places. And then I did see a question about um, which contracts are, are transferring over. Um, we did put in the chat box uh, a link to all of the programs that transfer over. So it would be those contracts related to those programs, but we are doing a deeper dive with CDE on the inventory of all of the contracts and we'll have more specific information coming soon. Okay, thank you for those questions. We see a few more in chat. So we'll go ahead and start uh, parsing through some of the questions that are um, being elevated in chat. And as a reminder, if you'd like to uh, ask your question verbally to go ahead and uh, utilize the raise hand feature. I think I do see a question, Christina, about whether or not the migrant child care program is transferring um, to CDSS or staying with CDE. And again, we, we did post the link in the chat so you can see the full list of programs. But in response to that specific question, yes, that program is transferring to CDSS. Jen, this is Sarah Neville Morgan from CDE. Did you want me to respond to some of the California State Preschool Program and TK related questions? That would be great, Sarah. Thank you. You're welcome. So I saw a lot of them in the um, chat. 
and we'll follow up with Stephen Profiter, our Director of Early Learning and Care at CDE, so that we can specifically answer more in a separate session as well. But just to let everyone know, yes, the California State Preschool Program remains at CDE, and we're really looking at this as a preschool through 12th grade opportunity with stronger connections to TK and K, and actually have launched a preschool through third grade initiative to really address alignment through the educational systems and are focusing most deeply on inclusion and really connecting more strongly with special education so that more of our children who have an individualized education plan or IEP can be in inclusive preschool settings and then supporting that transition as well as really looking at our dual language learners and ensuring that connection for what they have to do in K-12 is there from the very beginning. So I think Jen really touched on how we're partnering between CDE and CDSS. Our teams have actually now daily meetings throughout the week and um, multiple sometimes to really drop in deeply on the transition and make sure that we are both doing everything we can to ensure a smooth transition. So I know some of the components that are in the budget are more focused on TK. And I think the administration pulled from the master plan for early learning and care for that. There were also components in the master plan that highlighted an expansion that would really support our CSPP and other preschool programs in meeting TK standards to also be part of that universal preschool sort of vision for four-year-olds and an expansion of our California State Preschool Program for three-year-olds to be including all children with IEPs. So those are parts that we're really excited about. We do want to see that balance. So it is a mixed delivery system as we look at a universal component. And universalism, many of you know, is really critical when you look at outcomes and that currently our system really segregates children by income. And we have found through research that children do best when we have lack of segregation, right? So not only do you get that exposure, that's really critical as we look at inclusion, as we look at acceptance and diversity, but that diversity of income really matters also as part of an inclusive society that really has better awareness and understanding. So I don't know if there are other questions specific to CSPP and I'm actually on my phone. So this is small because I'm in a English learner specialist <laughs> meeting on my, my computer at the same time. So, um, but do want to be here to really support all of you through this transition. In addition to CSPP, there are some other programs remaining at CDE and it's really those that are funded through Proposition 98, our education funds. And so there's an American Indian school-based program. There's the CSPP QRS block grant. There's the inclusive early education program and um, a couple other pieces that are, are more focused on the educational component of children in their development. So I will be quiet and Jen and Jennifer, just tap me if you need me for some additional questions. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. And it looks like we had a question um, about the date of the transition, June 30th. So I'll turn it over to Selena to answer that question. Yeah, that, that question had to do with whether we have contingency plans um, regarding the June 30th date. The one area that we are specifically focusing on in terms of contingency has to do with the data and IT systems. We definitely recognize how important the system is in terms of not having any disruption to payments for contractors. So we are in the process of um, parsing through all of the different uh, systems and applications for the CDE programs and identifying which ones can um, be lifted over um, easily um, between now and uh, July 1 so that those will be uh, moved in the first phase. And then the contingency would be that for those that uh, really need more thoughtful planning um, and um, perhaps consideration of builds of additional or new systems, we would um, take a little bit more time 
to phase that out. And um, so more to come on that, but that is the, the current um, approach at a very high level um, in terms of contingency. There was also a question in the chat about the new CCDF state plan that um, is being worked on right now and its impact on the transition. And I just wanted to um, acknowledge that CDE and CDSS are working very closely together to co-author that plan. Um, CDE is currently the single state agency under the CCDF. Uh, but during the time of the plan's actual operation, the programs will be and the funding will be under um, CDSS. And so we are co-creating that plan and um, working closely together. Yes, thanks, Jen. So it's really true. We, our teams have weekly meetings where they're co-creating that plan, co-leading the input sessions, working on questions around the input sessions, reviewing the draft of the plan and the posting. So it truly is a joint development of it so that that handoff and transition will reflect the fact that CDS has, has been engaged in the entire development of the plan. Thanks, Sarah. I did also see a comment about um, the reference to sort of programs focused on education remaining with CDE and programs um, that are focused on childcare coming to CDSS and just acknowledge that that I think we all know and share the idea that um, childcare and development programs, um, whether they're coming through the preschool or TK door or whether they are the other programs serve multiple purposes um, and those purposes include education and development for children in all of the programs, whether they'll be at CDSS or CDE. Um, and they also include many benefits to the stabilization of families and the economic well being of families. And so I think both CDSS and CDE see the value of high quality childcare in terms of its education for all of the programs that we're talking about here this morning. And just want to clarify that um, is, a, is a shared value. Definitely, Jen. So I think we all know that babies are actually learning prenatally. So even saying it starts at birth isn't quite correct. But we, I'm actually an infant toddler specialist and have an early intervention background and early mental health background. So it is so true that how we support infants and toddlers is really critical. And we know that the brain architecture starts prenatally and that what happens in those first three years is really critical as well as ensuring that the workforce has the supports to really understand how to make engaging early learning activities and responsive interactions as a core part of how they operate either their program or their home-based care. So supporting our workforce is really critical to have those skills and knowledge and ability as well as the compensation that's related to that. I think that educational language is that we know as children grow and develop, they are more ready for different components and that the preschool component is what we really want to ensure is more aligned to K-12 so that those transitions happen smoothly. And I saw a comment around pushing down curriculum. Our view is always to push up curriculum and to continue to push up that developmental awareness so that we do get developmentally appropriate programs that really support every child in their best way. Thank you for that, Jen and, and Sarah. We do have a raised um, hand, so I want to get to this question before we continue with the questions that are being lifted in the comments or chat box. So Melinda Frizzell, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you so you can ask your question. Yeah, I just want I just wanted the appropriate person to comment on the the chat that was posted by all five that says above it says California has parent choice that will not change, but now CSPP will not fund TK eligible children, so those lo low income children will be forced to attend TK, even if it is not in their best interest. Uh, their developmental and educational interests, while families of means will still have this choice. So how is that equal and fair? I 
And thank you. I think that goes back to CDE as well. I'm so sorry, Jen and Jennifer, that I keep jumping in. That is something we I are appreciate actually, it, sir. Yeah, we're currently addressing that both with the Department of Finance and with the legislature. And we have some draft proposed language to address this year's issues, knowing that actually a lot of our CSPP programs have children that are in the age definition in the education code, actually TK or even kindergarten aged. Um, so we're addressing that for the pandemic and we have it on a list of things that we want to work with them on for the out years because right now what CDE is sort of beholden to is what is in education code and those age definitions where children are eligible for CSPP or not eligible for CSPP, those are part of what is in education code. And definitely see you around things like ratio and group size. The master plan did call that out as areas of, that needed improvement around TK, our transitional kindergarten, as well as how do we better align our California State Preschool Program. And I would be remiss if I didn't call out Head Start, knowing that a lot of our CSPPs are actually layered with Head Start so that we have a greater support for our children and families through those layering of funds, as well as an ability to do more critical components around full child with developmental screenings, with um, additional family support and components that Head Start is funded for. So big acknowledgement that that is critical for our system. While folks are gathering their additional questions, I just want to acknowledge of one of the comments in the chat about the CACFP program and its importance to ensuring that children receive balanced nutrition. Um, we are looking forward to having the CACFP program uh, be one of the programs that transfers from CDE to CDSS and think that there will be really great opportunities for synergy with the other nutrition um, programs, including CalFresh and others that CDSS um, operates. So just want to acknowledge, um, acknowledge that comment and that program as well.
I do also see a question in Spanish in the chat about whether or not we can um, avoid duplication of functions and just want to acknowledge again that we are working very closely together as the two departments um, to to try to do exactly that. There um, will of course be some need for coordination and some degree of overlap, but it is certainly our goal to streamline the processes as much as we can and to ensure no disruption to the current system, but also some efficiencies and improvements along the way. There is a question here, Sarah. It looks like maybe we can do some sharing um, about the master plan and the transition. Um, the, the overarching question about the master plan is, are we mapping out a longer term implementation of ideas and recommendations? And then there are some specific pieces of it related to CSPP and TK um, that I will let Sarah address. But in the, in the overarching question, I just want to acknowledge that um, the master plan is is sort of a long term mapping um, of of many policies and each of them will require, um, as I sort of mentioned before, the actual policy proposals and funding to go along with them. And so there's um, a great deal of work that went into the creation of the master plan and there will also be a great deal of work that goes into um, building off of the master plan, along with the assemblies. Blue Ribbon Commission report and a number of others as well um, that, that lay out critical priorities for our long-term vision. And so we really look forward to working with all of you um, on, on making many of those things real. And just to acknowledge the comments around the master plan and, and the universal preschool component of that, you're correct in that it was an expansion of TK, but also a support for programs in the field that could meet those standards to also be part of a universal TK, actually universal preschool program. And then that expansion of CSPP most directly for three-year-olds to continue to expand to include more children who are eligible, as well as that expansion for children with disabilities. So that is something that we're really cognizant of We've been mapping out internally where the master plan has components that are direct for CDE and then where it has collaborative pieces with DSS or with the California Teaching Commission, um, Credentialing Commission. So working with CTC and DSS will be really critical in several key components of the master plan. So as you all know, the master plan is a roadmap but it does not have specific funding attached to it. So it's through that budget process that components of it will come up to be funded. And so I think you all have pointed out that one component has been addressed in the governor's proposed budget, but other parts weren't included in that. And so that's just something, opportunities for voices to be shared as always through a budget process to look at that diversity. So one of the things I highlighted as part of that master plan development was looking at other states who have done this successfully. And one that I visited and really learned a lot from was the Boston Public Schools Universal Preschool Program, which is a mixed delivery. So they have local educational agencies offering a preschool program that is aligned up through second grade. And then they also have community-based agencies knowing that some families need 10 hours plus of a program. And so ensuring that families could choose in that community which one made the most sense for them and how to make sure that their family service needs were met. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Sarah. I just want to raise in chat Corey Rada, who's um, 
one of the members of our team at the Department of Social Services consolidated all of the links that have been referenced around not just uh, the CCDF state plan and how to engage in that stakeholder feedback process, but also the transition plan. Uh, and so those links can be seen in chat uh, under Corey uh, Rodis submission. So as a reminder, the transition plan walkthrough uh, is happening next week on February 4th. The link to register for that session is in the chat, uh, as well as the email address to direct any responses or questions, recommendations, et cetera, uh, to us around the transition. Uh, that email address is on your screen, but also in chat, cctransition at dss.ca.gov. Uh, as mentioned throughout the presentation and where all of the materials around stakeholder engagement or some of these updates more broadly that folks have been uh, lifting as part of the responses to the questions that have been raised, uh, you can find that information on our child care transition webpage. Um, and that has also been linked in the chat. And as a reminder for comments, feedback related to the CCDF state plan, uh, that email address again in chat is statepln at cde.ca.gov. Thanks, Christina. I did also see a question in the chat about what came first, SB 98 or um, the the trailer bill that moves the programs from CDE to CDSS or the master plan. Um, the master plan has been in development for quite some time, but the actual release of the master plan um, was just just recently happened within the last few months. So, um, depending on how you want to think about the uh, development versus the actual release, um, they were happening at some similar times. And just as a reminder, as we continue to parse through the questions, there are a lot of comments and feedback related items that are being elevated in the chat. Um, things along the lines of integrating some of the recommendations from the Blue Ribbon Report, uh, as well as um, the intention behind Whole Child, Whole Family and some of the feedback that was related around that particular topic. So again, we are capturing the feedback as well as the questions that are being lifted in chat. Um, as uh, part of our stakeholder feedback process. So just wanting to acknowledge um, that as folks are continuing to submit those comments uh, in chat as well.
Okay, I think I, we see quite a few questions still coming in as well as comments. So we are monitoring those and wanna encourage that that continue. And as that continues, and as the staff start parsing through these comments and questions, just another reminder that you can also ask your questions verbally through the raise hand feature. Um, the raise hand feature can be accessed on the bottom right hand of your screen. Uh, and when your hand is raised, we'll go ahead and unmute you. If you have any final questions, I know we're gonna wrap up here in, a few, um, in, in just a few minutes, but um, wanting to remind folks that this isn't the only forum or place to submit comments and questions related to the transition, uh, but we also have our survey that's live on our website, which again has been linked in the chat. Thank you, Corey, for continuing to, to elevate those links uh, that are really important for the engagement process. Um, and so that survey will be live not just for the time being, but throughout the entire transition process to make sure we're capturing feedback as things continue to unfold and we move forward. Um, with that, I will see if there's any other um, questions coming in via uh, the raise hand feature and we'll turn it over to others if there are any questions in here related to the transition uh, that we wanted to address now before we wrap up. Thanks, Christina. This is Jen. I do think it would be um, helpful to maybe just give a give a reminder. I saw a couple of questions about some policy changes that folks are are potentially um, asking if they're happening now or anticipating, for example, about staffing requirements related to the CCTR or general child care programs. Um, just want to give a reminder that we're not currently recommending significant policy changes that that we will be engaging with all of you through the budget and legislative processes with respect to major policy changes um, and that we look forward to those conversations but they will not come as surprises um, or happen only administratively that they will be things that we engage with you about also want to just flag for folks that um, February 1st is um, the date when the governor's budget um, trailer bill language that is proposed is, is typically posted on the Department of Finance's website. And we do anticipate this year that there will be some trailer bill language related to the transition. It is technical language um, carrying out some of the code changes that uh, didn't get picked up in that first time around last year in the details of changing things that are still listed under the responsibility of the superintendent in certain sections to CDSS, changes like that. And so um, that will be publicly posted and we look forward to your review of that as well. I see also that there's a question with respect to the sort of current policies um, that are COVID related and just want to acknowledge that there also are going to be many forums and opportunities to engage with respect to the budget and to um, what's in the governor's budget as well as the federal funding um, that is coming. Um, the next that I'm tracking is that there's also going to be a budget update provided at the next um, early childhood policy council meeting. And so we look forward to engaging with all of you through that forum and through um, the regular budget process with respect to those policies and working in partnership with CDE and the Department of Finance. And this is Selena. I just wanna acknowledge a couple of the questions I see in the chat regarding um, funding applications as well as the 
uh, reserve accounts. Um, these are um, areas where we are exploring options. We certainly want to look for um, simplification to make it easiest on contractors. And we are also looking at um, what options are available to give us the most flexibility. So we will definitely track these for a more detailed report out in the next stakeholder meeting. This is Sarah again from CDE. I just wanted to jump in to address the question about mixed delivery and universal preschool. So CDE is really aware of that. We've, I've actually been working on various parts of preschool for all since 2003 and five, when I was at First Five California and we launched our preschool for all and then our power of preschool program. So that is something that is we are very cognizant of. Hence why in the master plan, it did land on a recommendation that was both TK as well as an expansion to include programs that could meet the similar standards. So I think that's something that will come out in healthy conversations as the details of a the roadmap of the master plan are really dug into. And you'll see that both the budget as well as various bills coming out of legislative members address components and that is where they will need to hear voices from the field around what works best with a very deep focus on what best supports children in their school readiness and in that lifelong ability to address not just academic success but be ready for college career health and all of those other components that we know are really critical um, I will set up with Steve a separate session that can be more focused on CSPP, seeing all the interest in here. Steve does have weekly webinars on Fridays with our contractors, but it sounds like from this that we need a very CSPP TK focused session so that I, I don't keep jumping in and taking over DSS's transition one. But thanks Jen and Jennifer for allowing me space to help address the questions. Thank you, Sarah, for jumping in and for recognizing that um, high level of interest. So uh, appreciate that. And want to thank everyone again for joining us this morning. Gracias para su participación. Um, we will go ahead and close out the um, audio part of our part of our um, session, um, but we will leave the chat open until 1030. So if you think of something, um, after we have exited um, that you'd like to say, we can still capture those, those questions and comments and make sure that we are able to address them in the coming weeks and months. Uh, thank you again for joining us, for your support during this transition, for partnering with all of us to make sure that it is a successful transition. I saw in the chat someone's comment that it was a, a big lift, a large endeavor. We agree it is, and it's one that is of the utmost importance to importance to all of us and we look forward to working closely with all of you to make sure that we are, are all successful. 
for the good of those we serve. So with that, thank you again. And we'll go ahead and close out, but leave the chat open. <laughs>